Hello there, everybody. Dan Calloway here again, and uh, coming to you from the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And I uh, just wanted to do a quick video, um, follow up to a video I did yesterday uh, on PHP and HTML web based application development. And today uh, I want to get in and uh, show you a uh, project, a web based application that I did um, called the Sterling Paint Project. So let's get into it. Uh, I've got a file here. I've got code uh, editor called Kate pulled up, and I've got the project requirements here called the Sterling Paint Project. Let me just go ahead and read it to you. It says Sterling Paints Incorporated has two types of paint in their inventory. The first type is premium paint at $20 per gallon, and regular paint at a cost of $15 per gallon. Both premium and regular paint sold by Sterling Paints will cover an area of roughly 37 square meters. If one hires a painter uh, to paint their home, the cost of labor is $25 per hour, and the painter can paint roughly 18 square meters in an hour's time. John Westenberger wants to hire a painter from Sterling Paints to paint a room in his home. John goes up on the web to a customer form supplied by Sterling Paints to enter the room width, length, and height in meters that he wants painted. Additionally, the customer also enters whether they want to have premium or regular paint used and also whether they are a first-time customer. First-time customers of Sterling Paints who spend at least $200 on their orders are offered a 10% discount on the total cost of painting their home, which is the labor cost of the paint, total cost of the paint used based on the dimensions provided uh, of each room plus the cost of labor for the hired painter. Let's write a web-based application here that will allow John to determine what it will cost him to paint his living room which is roughly 10 meters long, 5 meters wide, and 5 meters high. John is also painting the ceiling so we will include this in our calculation. Okay, so been hired by I've been hired by Sterling Paints to write an application on the web so that John can go up and enter the values there and determine uh, what it's going to cost him to paint uh, a room in his home uh, if he allows Sterling Paints Painter to do it. And so let's get, take a look at this. Here's the HTML form, the form itself that I created. Let me go up to the top of the form here. Uh, and I'm calling it paintestimate.html. So it's a uh, HTML form uh, web page, if you will. It's got a head tag called Sterling Paints. I'm linking uh, with a relative style sheet link here of type CSS uh, and linking that to sample1.css, which is a cascading style sheet that controls the various elements on the uh, HTML form and the PHP page that gets sent back to the user. Here is the uh, file itself. We'll take a look at that in a moment. So I close the head tag and then I start a body tag here and I have an H1 heading called Sterling Paints and then a paragraph down below that says use this form to obtain a quick estimate of the cost to paint a room. Then here I have a paragraph uh, tag and then a form tag whose form action is paintestimate.php which is this form right here. The method is called post, which means I'm going to be taking input from the customer on this HTML form and sending it to the PHP hypertext preprocessor that's going to be generating this PHP page on the fly that gets sent back to John or the, any customer. All right, so I've got a paragraph tag here, the room length and meters. It's prompting the, the customer for the room length and meters. The input type is text, the size is 5, and the name of that input type is called room length. Okay, let me come down. Uh, then come down here to the next. We've got a paragraph tag in between. Then we have room width in meters, prompting the user now for the room width. Uh, the input type is text, size is 5, its name is room width. Then we come down to the room height in meters. We're prompting the user for the, what is the height of this room. Um, its input type is text, its size is 5, and its name is room height. 
okay? The size there, by the way, is the width of that uh, form field that gets filled in by the user on the page, the HTML page. Then we have select paint quality, and so we have a selection to be made here. The name of the selection is paint, and there are two options. One is premium, one is regular. So the customer has a choice in a pull-down menu, if you will, to select either premium or regular, and whichever one the, uh, the customer selects, will determine the costs associated with that paint. Here uh, we got a paragraph tag, are you a first time customer? Uh, the selection here again is call first time, that's its name. You have two options, either yes or no. If the customer selects yes and if the customer spends at least $200 in total cost with uh, Sterling Paints, then they will be offered the 10% discount. If the customer selects no, then that does not apply. Okay, let's come on down. Then we have another input type, which is a submit button, and its name is, or its value, is called display estimated paint cost. That's what the customer will click on in order to get uh, a return page that shows them what the uh, estimated painting paint cost will be from Sterling Paints. Okay, then we end the form, then we end the body, and then we end the HTML page altogether. All right, so the second page that I created was the PHP page. Let's take a look at that. We've got an HTML tag, we had a head tag, heads called Sterling Paints. I'm also linking out here on the style sheet to a CSS page called, or form called sample1.css. We'll take a look at that. Uh, we end the head tag and then we start the body tag, and the body tag begins with a heading called Sterling Paints, Paint Project Estimate. Then we have a, our PHP code block, which is our PHP code that does the calculations and other things here for us. All right, so we have a variable called room length, which is assigned the post array of room length, which is that value taken from the HTML page. Then we have a variable called room width, which is the assigned the post array of room width. Then we have uh, a variable called room height, which is the post array of room height. Uh, then we have a variable called paint, which is the post array of paint taken from the HTML form. And then we have another variable called first time, which is a post array of the first time uh, value taken from the HTML form. Remember, the customer had to select whether uh, he was or was not uh, a first-time customer. Then we have calculations that that follow uh, these uh, variable initial initializations. The first variable uh, is the long wall area, okay, and that is assigned the room length times the room height. It's just geometry. It's a rectangle, and the rectangle's area is the length times the width or height here in this case. The width of the uh, the uh, wall area is the room width times room height. It's assigned that. Um, and so the area of the wide wall, rather, is the room width times height. Then the ceiling area is the uh, room length times the room width. All right. And then the total area variable is the long wall area, this one here, times two, because there's two walls to the room, and then plus the wide wall area here, times two, okay, which because there are two wide walls, so there are two long walls and two wide walls, and then the ceiling area, okay, so that takes in the entire room. Uh, it's a box, basically, with two walls, two long walls, two wide walls, and then a ceiling. We do not paint the floor. Okay, so we ask a question here. This is the first conditional that occurs in my form. And the conditional is, if paint variable value is equal to premium, in other words, if the customer selects premium as the paint they want to use, then the paint cost variable is assigned the total area, okay, determined right here, divided by 37 square meters, 
and then we take the ceiling of that, which is the upper limit of that value, ceiling function, at times $20, okay, since premium paint is $20 a gallon. So this determines the total number of gallons. Else, in other words, if that's not the case, and the customer selects something other than premium, which the only other option is regular, then the paint cost is the ceiling function of the total area divided by 37 times $15 a gallon, since that's what the cost of regular paint is. But come on down. Here we have total cost is the total area divided by, or labor cost rather, is the total area divided by 18. Remember, the, the uh, painter is able to paint 18 square meters per hour, roughly. So it's the total area painted divided by 18 times 25, and the uh, labor cost for the painter is $25 per hour. Okay, So the total cost to the customer then is the value of the paint cost variable plus the value of the labor cost variable. So it's the sum of these two values here. All right, so let's come on down. We have some print functions uh, that we need to print out, some lines. <clears throat> the first print function is the length of room is the room length variable in uh, meters. The width of the room is the room width variable in meters. The height of room it prints out here is the room height in meters. And then the paint cost is the paint cost into two decimal place accuracy using the number underscore format function. And then the labor cost is the labor cost variable value to two decimal place accuracy using the number underscore format function. Then we have another question to ask. We need to determine whether this customer is a first time customer and whether they've spent $200 or more in this order. And so now we ask the question, if the first time customer va variable is assigned yes, in other words from the form, and the total cost is greater than or equal to 200, then the reduced cost to the customer is gonna be the total cost times 90%. All right, times 0.9, which is equivalent to a 10% discount. So if you take the total cost and take 90% of it, that's a 10% discount on the total cost, which is the reduced cost. And then we print the statement, uh, and we print it bold. We want your service, and since you are a first-time customer and your order is over $200, we are offering a 20% dis or 10% discount. Uh, your actual cost will be and that'll be the reduced cost to do decimal places using the number underscore format function. Then we end the strong tag, in other words, end the bold. If this is not true, if both this, the first time customer being yes, and total cost being greater than or equal to 200 is, either one of those is false, then this will not get processed. And then we'll drop down to the else, since this is a and conjunction here um, on the Boolean. Else we print out total cost is this total cost of two decimal place accuracy using the number underscore format function. Then we end the PHP code block. And then we come down and I have a link back to the form here, which is an anchor tag, which is a hypertext reference to paintestimate.html. And it reads as follows, return to Sterling Paints form. And then we end the body tag and the HTML tag itself, ending the PHP form, okay? So let's take a look at that CSS sample uh, file that we referenced in both of these HTML and PHP forms here. So here is the sample1.css or the cascading style sheet. Now what a CSS does, if you're not familiar with it, is it controls various elements of either one of these two forms, okay? Um, what's on the left here is what's called the, the option, okay? What's in the curly braces is a combination of a property and a value. So the body option here on the form, anywhere the body appears in either one of these forms, uh, the background for that particular body is going to be a light gray, okay? For a heading, uh, H1 heading, the font family used is going to be an, uh, an Arial or a Helvetica or sans serif. Its font size is going to be 18 points. Its color is going to be navy and it's going to be bolded. Font weight is bold. For an H2 tag that's referenced here, we're going to have a font family of Arial, Helvetica, or sans serif. 
The font size is going to be 12 points since it's smaller. Color is going to be navy. Font weight is going to be bold as well. And then on down, okay? Um, since it references the sample one.css, it controls all the aspects of that form there and that form there as well, okay? All right, so now we have all three of these in place. Let's go out and let's take a look at the form itself. So John Westenberger is going to go up on the web, and he's going to uh, pull up this form from Sterling Paints, and it's going to allow him to enter his information and get an estimate for what it's going to cost him to get his room painted. All right, so the Sterling Paints form says, and this is based on the HTML form that I showed you earlier, Use this form to obtain a quick estimate of the cost to paint a room. It prompts the user for the room length in meters, and so I said that we we're going to put in 10 meters. All right, and then the room width, we were saying that that's going to be 5 meters. Okay, let me tab down. The room height is going to be 5 meters as well, and let me tab down to the next form. Um, field and here we have select paint quality now we can select either premium or we can select regular I'm going to go ahead and select regular the first time through and then it's asking me as John Westenberger am I am I a first time customer I'm going to say yes because I am I've never used it before I've never been to sterling paint so I'm going to say yes I'm a first time customer and so I'm going to click on display estimated painting cost and when I do what gets returned is the estimate all right, so Sterling Paints, Paint Project Estimate. The length of the room is 10 meters. That's just reinforcing to the customer, echoing back to the customer what they provided as input. The width of the room is 5 meters, and the height of the room is 5 meters. And so the paint cost is going to be $90, and the labor cost is going to be $300. Okay, and since the total cost here, that's $390 if you do the math, since that's greater than or equal to $200, okay, and he's a first-time customer, he gets prompted with this statement, if you recall, from the uh, PHP form, that we want you your service, and since you are a first-time customer and your order is over $200, we're offering a 10% deduction, and so your actual cost will be $351. So instead of $390, he's going to get a 10% discount and it's going to be $351 total, total cost as opposed to $390. So he gets that discount. So let's return back to the form, and let's go back. And let's assume now, uh, this time, that John says, oh, you know, maybe I don't want to use um, premium paint. Let's see what it's going to cost if I use uh, just regular paint. All right, so let's come down. Instead of selecting premium paint, uh, let's uh, actually, I think we selected regular, didn't we? So let's select premium, sorry. And then, yes, he's still a first time customer. So let's click that estimate there. And yeah, uh, so first time we selected standard uh, or regular, and now we're going to select premium. And so this time the paint cost is 120, labor cost is 300. And so still he's spending more than $200, and still he's a first time customer. So he's. Uh, going to get prompted with this since you're a first-time customer and your order is over $200 since it is $300 and, or $420. That's more than $200. Um, your actual cost will be $378. So instead of $420, he's going to have a cost assigned to him of $378 in the estimate provided by Sterling Paints. All right, so let's go back again and let's let's do this. Let's change Let's keep the dimensions the same. Uh, 10 meters in room length, 5 meters in room height, 5, I mean width, 5 meters in room height. And let's keep it at premium. And let's say, no, I'm not a first time customer. Okay. So now we just assume or just pretend that John is, you know, a returning customer to Sterling Paints. All right. So he's not a returning customer, which means one of those uh, questions about whether you're a first-time customer and you spend more than $200. One of those is false. This is false. So that means that he's not going to get a 10% discount even if he spends more than $200. Okay. And so let's look at what his estimate is going to be. All right. His estimate is going to be 
Same dimensions here, room length of 10 meters, room height, width of 5 meters, room height of 5 meters. So his paint cost is going to be $120, his labor cost is going to be $300, and he's going to spend a total amount of $420 as estimated by this paint project estimate. Okay? Now, however, if John, uh, let's say he wants to paint a different room, and let's say that room is 20 meters in length, and, instead, and it's still 5 meters high, uh, wide, or let's say 15 meters wide, and let's say that room is uh, 5 meters high, okay, and uh, he wants to select premium paint, and let's say he is a returning customer, let's click on what the estimate's going to be. All right, so it's 20 meters by 15 meters by 5 meters, so his paint cost is going to be $360. The total cost of labor is 925 so the total combined looks like it's uh, $1,285. Uh, and so with the 10% discount, since he is a first-time customer and he's spending more than $200, it's only going to be $1,156.50 to John. Okay, So this is the paint project estimate form that Sterling Paints hired me to, to create for their web, uh, web uh, site so that customers can go up and enter the values of the, their room length, room width, and room height, and whether they want premium or, or regular paint, and whether they're a first time or not a customer or not, and get an estimate back so that they can determine whether to pick up that phone and call Sterling Paints to uh, ask them to come paint their home. All right, so uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna call this uh, part two of yesterday's video and have a nice day. Don't, don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section and if you don't subscribe to my uh, uh, Linux Unix Tech channel already go ahead and subscribe please I really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a nice day.